subscribe to the channel, budget audio review and upgrades. I will be doing a few shout outs and some of my videos, just people that's been helping me out, bringing stuff around, etc. Uh, today's one's just to someone who dropped a few albums off to me and he's got thousands and thousands around there. And the channel is called uh, Record Vinyl Recommendations, Ron's 12 Inches. Now I'll put a link down the bottom, it's up on the screen now. I will be doing a few other shout outs to other people as the channel progresses and I'll, I'll talk more about their stuff, etc. But uh, yeah, well worth a visit. He's, he's just starting up and he's, gonna, he's got his own take on how to do the channel, etc. But uh, he's got a very uh, top of the range system there and he's into all kinds of music and uh, you know, just going to kind of give you some recommendations, some records that you may want to listen out for yourself, you know, mainly all vinyl, but he's got tons of CDs, etc. Anyway, that's that. Today I'll be talking about this Pioneer. This is a KX636, but it's identical to the normal SX636 inside, apart from the tuner. This has got a shortwave tuner where the uh, SX636 would have a, a medium rate tuner. Uh, that's the only difference. Other than that, they're identical. So uh, let's give you a little rundown exactly what's happened with this. I bought this in a second-hand hi-fi shop in Portsmouth and uh, when I got it home, it's working fine. The bloke said it's working fine. He said this is quite a rare one. I think I paid about £80 for it at the time. You see, because it's got the short wave on it. I'd like to say it's identical to the 636 apart from that. So I thought, yeah, it's a nice looking receiver. Be nice to do a review on it, be nice to listen to it, etc. I got it home and I managed to get a test uh, video up on my channel. This is just like a YouTube library uh, track that I play just to give you a little sound test. I'll do a link at the top to that now so you can see it. And that all worked fine, that was perfect, like it sounded okay and everything. It's not till I actually decided to do another video for the channel. And uh, that video was called uh, Check Amplifier, Check the Amplifier's Channels are Level. And it's a bit of a long winded video to be honest with you. Links at the top now. It's just saying that you know, sometimes when you're going to get these old amplifiers, or any, you know, it would be a new one probably, be an old amplifier, you get it home, and uh, you know, maybe the balance ain't exactly, even though it's in the middle, the balance ain't balancing the amplifier exactly, one channel slightly louder than the other. It's just a way of, you know, rather than listening to it, you may not be able to pick it up, it's to link this up to your PC and uh, use a program called Audacity, a free program and you plug the out, put your headphone socket of this into your PC, a normal kind of lead, and you'll be able to see it on a, you know, on, a, on the screen, on a graph, so to speak, uh, to give you a much more indication. That, like I say, that video is maybe worth checking out. It's a bit long winded. Once you've seen me do one amplifier, then you, you know what it's all about, really. But it's just, I put so many together there just to give you an idea of how different ones would sound different. It could be slightly different from the other, just to give you a, an idea, really. But anyway, I want to come to do this one, so let's just take a quick look at that video of me doing this one. Okay, the next one. Oh. <clears throat> and as you could hear there, there was lots of noise coming out of the channel. And it, it wasn't that loud really, but it was, it was noise. It was loud enough. It was noise coming out. I quickly turned it off. I thought, oh, well, that sounds like that's not quite right. So we won't put that one in the video. We're knocked out on the head. And we'll come to that at a later time. So in the meantime, like over a period of a, a few weeks, etc., I've been trying it. And, it was, and that, that noise got a lot worse and uh, to the stage, I did do a quick video, I managed to delete it, typical, but uh, I did do a vid quick video and that was making so much popping and cracking was coming out of the speakers, it was unbelievable, it was really, really loud, even obviously with the volume on zero, it was really, really loud. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to try and mend that now and get it sorted so I can actually do a proper review of this, uh, you know, how I feel with sounds, etc. So, um, you know, some of these things you can just go on the internet, have a quick search and uh, there's lots of forums, etc. Uh, places are going to give you an idea where to start on this and uh, that's exactly what I did with this. So I'm, over now I'm going to show you uh, a, a complete run of video here. It's going to start off from me you know, trying to fault find this by looking at, like say online, getting a few ideas where to look. And I'm going to talk you through what I did and uh, hopefully like at the end of the video it's all going to be working and it'll give you an idea maybe if you've got something like that. It's getting a load of popping coming out of the speakers, a load of crackling, a load of interference kind of thing. Um, you know, where to look, where to start looking etc so let's run that video now and i'll come back at the end just to right okay lucky enough there's enough forums and uh, places to search on the internet to get some information about this uh, 636 uh, receiver and uh, a lot of people indicate that these are the transistors you should be looking at first transistor q5 and q6 q5 is on the left channel and as you can see that circuit is fully you know complete where the right channel they kind of miss out some of the components etc because it's exactly the same uh, layout as the left channel so there you can see arrow the mirror mid middle if I can say it middle uh, orange arrow uh, indicating the train one of the transistors we're going to pull out here and the other ones uh, indicated by the other orange arrow so we're going to take these transistors out and this is where they are on the board this is looking top side down on the board 
uh, and this is like with all the components removed this is be a plain board before the components were put on there and as you can see Pioneer have actually got the symbol on there symbols for everything actually and uh, there's the transistors both shown that we would replace uh, in the red boxes and I've actually labeled one up on the left hand side collector emitter and base so when you take out the actual original transistor and you go to put in the replacement in this case the original transistor is a 2SC1451 and we'll be replacing it with a KSC3503 that's a KSC3503 transistor um, but as I looked at the circuit board I could see that uh, as you can see here uh, with the yellow arrows these two transistors are in fact replacements these are KSC305 transistors where someone's already uh, done the replacement here so obviously this had a fault at some stage with uh, a lot of static or popping on the channels and uh, that's the first thing they did was replace them transistors uh, going by the forms etc that, that's exactly what you do and this is the underside of the ball this is where they soldered them uh, new transistors and replacements in that's where they would have went on the underside of the circuit board so that's pretty much done so we're going to look elsewhere now uh, I doubt these transistors have gone bad straight away again but obviously it's a, a second port of call maybe if you know we can't find anything else uh, that could rectify it we could come back here just in case if that you know something's gone wrong here but for the time being I'll skip that and we'll look elsewhere okay so um, you know Q5 and Q6 have already been replaced that was our on a first port of call uh, now looking at the forums etc another common transistor to have this fault this noisy channel this um, crackling sound uh, so forth is this 2SA763 transistor now we've got four of them uh, in this particular power amplifier part of the uh, so, you know part of the uh, receiver so we're going to replace these it's not a bad idea to replace these uh, this, this well could be it so uh, we're going to take these out these are transistors Q1 and Q3 on the left hand channel and transistors Q2 and Q4 on the uh, right hand channel I think I said that the right way around them channel so just recap there left hand channel Q1 Q3 and the right hand channel Q2 and Q4 so we actually look where they are on the circuit board I've, I've shown you there in the boxes that's where they are the left hand right channel of them transistors so that's where you'll be heading so if we have actually have a little look at them there they are on the circuit board and now um, this is them before of, uh, you know, this, is, this is the old transistors in circuit there so we're going to take these four transistors out and just to pay attention because um, if we actually look away these are actually wired um, so for, for instance if I put up this uh, picture here this is the original transistor and um, I'll put the package is a TO92 package this transistor and I've, it's kind of like got it's a flat bit down so to speak you know it's got the bump upwards if you kind of know what I mean there and you'll see that the uh, emitter is on the left hand side the collector is in the middle and the base is on the right hand side going by that little picture in the white box there and we've got the tester here, a little tester and as you can see the red lead well let's do it properly the green lead goes to pin one it says pin one on my little tester so the green lead is on the emitter it's telling me that's the emitter uh pin pin one is the emitter and the middle uh there is going to pin you know connection number two on that little multimeter is going to the middle of that transistor and that's measuring the uh, collector if you can see the picture a little picture there on that little tester it says number two forget about the color but you can see the c that's collector the one you can't quite see it but that's the emitter and the third lead which is the red lead uh, that goes to pin three on my little meter and it goes to the far side the right hand side of that transistor and when you look at there pin three is in purple there on the uh, little display and that's going to the base so uh, there you go so that, that's how that transistor is it's uh, you know face side down so to speak it's emitter collector and base now if we look at the uh, transistor we're going to replace it with this is the replacement transistor and the replacement for this is a KSA 992 FBU transistor we're going to use uh, you'll notice this is you know this is wired up a little bit differently I've connected up to the meter there and uh, the green lead is pin one don't forget and the green there pin one is actually the base so pin one's the base the uh, black lead which is the middle going to number two of me little multimeter thing there uh, that is the collector and pin three which is uh, the red lead is the emitter so this, this transistor is base collector emitter so we put them side by side this is both the original and replacement there next to each other you can see that these are slightly wired up differently the collector is still in the middle the middle pin of the transistor is the collector 
this T092 package transistor, but the base and emitter have been swapped round. They're the opposite way round. So when we go to fit these, this is the original ones in circuit at the moment. We're going to take them out. And once we've taken them out, I'll just show you the points actually before we take them out. There's the points on the circuit board where they actually are transistors one, two, three, and four. So that's where you'll be heading to desolder. So there's the transistors, as you can see, the original ones in the board. Now, when we come to replace it, which I'm going to replace them now, uh, I'm just showing the left hand channel here. This is just the left hand channel being shown. On the left hand side, you can see the original transistors on the board, and you can see kind of the way they're facing, the, the, the flat side of them are facing. Now we've had to spin these around 180 degrees because don't forget the base and sorry the uh, emitter and collector were the opposite ends of the original to what they are on the uh, replacement. So we've had to do a 180 turn. So just bear that in mind. Don't put the transistors back exactly as you uh, got them out, so to speak. You know, you took a picture and you put them in exactly the same way round as you took them out because you'll be wrong. Uh, I've had to do a 180 degree turn, as you can see on the right hand side of the channel, and that puts it in in the correct place with a. But a uh, collector and emitter have been swapped round. don't forget so if we go back to that picture there you can see that they actually wide up complete opposite to each other where the collector stays in the middle but the base and the emitter is been swapped round. they've kind of like flipped so just bear that in mind when replacing the original transistor with the uh, replacement okay the next thing i'm going to do is replace three capacitors on each channel so it's six capacitors in total the only reason that being as i did notice i was fiddling around with a circuit having a look at that, that, uh, that one in a, a red box, red arrow, 47 microfarad, 35 volt, was actually been taken out and replaced with a 100 microfarad, uh, I think 35 or 50 volt. So I thought, well, I'm, I might as well put it all, and, it, and each channel had a, a different capacitor somewhere else as well, they didn't have the same make, etc. So I thought I might as well tidy it up a bit and actually replace it with the correct capacitor rather than the 100 microfarad. So um, I decided to take these for three capacitors out this is where they are on the board, as you can see in the red boxes, six in total, three for each channel. Uh, so if you have a little look there, uh, that's you can see that someone had uh, replaced these uh, capacitors. Uh, the yellow arrow is showing you them. So I decided to take all them out and uh, put them back with the actual correct value, especially that uh, 47 microfarad, which someone replaced with 100 microfarad. So there's my replacement uh, capacitors put back in circuit there. And as you can see, the replacement uh, transistors that I put in circuit. One thing I forgot to do, and the person who changed the capacitor as well, doing this, uh, taking these pictures and etc., setting up lights and all that stuff, I actually took them out and forgot to clean. So the best thing is, you know, once you take these capacitors out, it's actually you could clean the circuit board underneath with some cleaning solution or something just to get the glue and muck off. But um, yeah, I forgot to do it in this occasion here, which uh, was a bit sloppy really, but uh, they're in there now. And uh, at some stage I may take them back out and clean it, or I may just leave it as it is for what it is, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, good idea obviously to clean up the uh, circuit board when taking these capacitors out and uh, replacing them with some new ones. So there's um, the new transistors in place and the new capacitors in place. Okay, now we've got to, uh, now we've replaced them capacitors. Uh, them uh, transistors, anything you replace, it's best to go and um, check the uh, DC bias, and it's fairly straightforward on this unit here. The instructions are in the manual, tells you how to do it there. Uh, I just collected uh, it says speaker, but an A pressed in there. If you look there in the instructions, uh, functional auxiliary power on, and I just connected a normal speaker uh, to the outputs of both channels. So I collected DC uh, voltmeter, and I stuck mine on 200 milliamps of DC voltmeter. And as it says there, the right hand channel is pin 8 and 11, and the left hand channel is 17 and 21. So and it asks you to get a reading of 20 millivolts after the unit's been on about 10 minutes. So there you can see the left hand channel, uh, pins 17 and 21. Just make sure I've got that right. Left hand channel, yes, left hand channel, pins 17 and 21. That's the connections there. And it doesn't matter which way you put the meter around, to be honest with you, because you just get a negative reading rather than a positive. You'll get a negative. This is the right hand channel, and that's pin 8 and 11. That's where you put the meter. And as you can see, I've put the meter on there, on the left hand channel, and it's reading 17.1. So we're not a million miles away, but we've just got to adjust this variable resistance little pot here shown with a yellow arrow. Just got to give it a very slight turn. You start turning it one way and it'll go up maybe or go down, then obviously just go the opposite way to get it the way you want it to move. And there you go, we've got it up to 20 milliamps now. So that's channel's fine, and we 
flick over to the other channel we've got our meter on there as you can see i've got the meters leads the wrong way around in this case where it means it's reading minus 16.6 but all i had to do is swap them leads around i didn't bother there's no need to really so now i'm looking for us you know a reading of minus 20 now and it's just a little turn on that pot and that's uh, got me up to uh, minus 20 which is 20 uh, millivolts so i'm just going to check now on the speaker terminals here the dc offset and on the uh, one channel we've got 10.3 which which is okay it's no problem at all obviously nearer zero the better but 10.3 uh, well within uh well within range there and on the other channel 13.8 so all's fine here uh we can give it a, like a test run okay so i replaced them four transistors and them six capacitors and it's worked absolutely fine i mean the transistors were the main cause were the, were the actual cause of it crackling and popping and making all them sounds uh, just one picture I forgot to put up there, which I'll put up now. This is the uh, solder joints for the capacitors. And all I've done to re remove all these components and just use a 30 watt soldering iron, which are fairly cheap, probably nine or 10 pounds, something like that. And some solder braid, which is a couple of pound. Just push the soldering iron against the solder braid and the, it sucked up all the solder and you know, just pulled the uh, components out. So that's it all done. Um, what I will say, I mean, I, I don't do repairs. I've had a few requests, even, you know, people want to bring stuff over, etc. not too far away. I just have not got the time. And it, it don't always work out, you know what I mean? Sometimes you, you, you make it worse than what it is by putting, you could accidentally put something in the wrong way around. It does happen. I've done it before. I think I mentioned I actually dropped a screwdriver in once. It was in my mouth and it kind of slipped out and ended up shorting something out. And that was the end of that. Um, so yeah, I, I just don't do it. I just haven't got the time. I've just about got the time to do these videos, but hopefully it's helped someone out who's thinking of doing this. Uh, you know, I know it's hard sometimes to find a local repair shop, you know, these days, a lot of stuff, just put one board in, if that don't work, take it out and replace it with another board, all that kind of stuff. But um, locally to me, there is a shop, a repair shop, you know, something maybe you should, you know, think about as well when you're looking for these repair shop is a disco shop. People, you know, a shop selling disco supply, so to speak. And they do a lot of like in-house repairs to disco stuff, etc. And obviously disco stuff's amplifiers, guitar amplifiers and all that. So, you know, worth popping in there and saying, look, I've got an amp or something that don't work. Can you have a little look at it for us? And, you know, maybe a little bit cheaper. And maybe somewhere that you maybe not, you know, thinking of looking at is a disco shop. You'll be surprised. Like I say, there's one local to me. And I just think there's quite a few about these kind of shops that still do repairs. Okay. Uh, until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.